Hi, welcome to second chapter of Sunham Superhero video. In this chapter, we will tell you why Sunham can be used for soil health and nematode management. Now, let us review some of the benefits of Sunham as a cover crop. Sunham, just like other leguminous crop, they possess a symbiotic relationship with rhizobacteria that cause the roots to form nodules, as you can see in this picture. This nodules allows sunham to fix nitrogen. Secondly, sunham grow rapidly. In Hawaii, if you sow 40 pounds of sunham seed per acre, it can produce more than 3 tons per acre of air dry organic matter within 60 days after germination. When sunham begins to bloom, it can produce more than 147 pounds of nitrogen per acre, depending on your seeding rate and growing season. Today, I'm going to tell you two more benefits of sunham as a cover crop. The first one is that when you grow sunham and incorporate it into soil, sunham will release a toxic compound known as monocrotaline that can suppress plant parasitic nematodes. At the same time, when you use sunham as a green manure, it can also enhance beneficial soil organisms that can maintain soil health. Now, what are plant parasitic nematodes? They are microscopic roundworms that parasitize plants. They cannot be seen with naked eyes and their body length is about the length of the tip of a pin. Picture on this screen show you different types of plant parasitic nematodes, such as root knot nematodes and burrowing nematodes. How can sunham suppress plant parasitic nematodes? Well, sunham possess many tactics. First of all, sunham can act as a poor host to the nematodes so that the nematode cannot reproduce. Second, when sunham is incorporated into soil, it can release a toxic compound known as monocrotaline that can intoxify certain nematodes. In addition, sunham can also gather its ally, which are natural enemies of nematodes, such as nematode trapping fungi shown in this picture. This is a nematode trapping fungus that form constricting rings trapping a root knot nematodes. Now let us look at how can sunham enhance beneficial soil organisms to maintain soil health. What is a healthy soil? A healthy soil should be able to function within ecosystem boundaries to sustain biological productivity, maintain environmental quality, and promote plant and animal health. One way to tell if a soil is healthy is to look at the nematode in the soil. Beside plant parasitic nematodes that possess a starlet to feed on plant roots, there are various types of beneficial nematodes in the soil. The bacterial wars feed on bacteria, the fungi wars feed on fungi, the omnivorous nematodes feed on various types of microorganisms including bacteria, fungi, or nematodes and the predatory nematodes has a big mouth cavity that allows them to feed on other nematodes. These beneficial nematodes play an important role in soil nutrient cycling. When organic matter is incorporated into the soil, the nutrient is in detrital form. This means that the nutrients are not available for the plants to uptake. Only when the organic matter is decomposed by fungus or bacteria that some of the nutrient is transformed into inorganic form for the plant to uptake. However, most of these nutrients are still tied up in the fungus or bacteria's bodies until they are being grazed by fungal feeding and bacterial feeding nematodes or even further being grazed by omnivorous and predatory nematodes that more of these nutrients will turn into inorganic forms for the plants to uptake. Although sunham is supposed to provide lots of nitrogen for your crop, but nitrogen availability of sunham changes from one part to another. Nitrogen from leaves and flower of sunham is easily available. Getting nitrogen from leaves and flower is like getting sugar out of candy cane. This is because leaves and flower have very low carbon to nitrogen ratios. However, nitrogen from stem tissues of sunham is difficult to obtain. It is like having to digest bamboo stick to obtain sugar. This is because stem tissues of sunham have high carbon to nitrogen ratios. On the other hand, nutrient availability of sunham also changes over time. When sunham is in its vegetative stage, it contains high amount of nitrogen. They have very low carbon to nitrogen ratio. This means that nitrogen is easily available for the plant to uptake. 
However, when the plant is fully matured, it contains high content of carbon with very high carbon to nitrogen ratio. This means that nitrogen is not readily available for the plants. The best time for incorporating sun hemp into soil for maximum nitrogen input is during early blooming stage. So what happens when sun hemp is incorporated into the soil? Initially, the sun hemp material will contain high nitrogen with very low carbon to nitrogen content. This will stimulate bacterial decomposition pathway and thus increase bacterial feeding nematodes. These materials will slowly break down and only the high carbon to nitrogen materials will remain. This will stimulate fungal decomposition process and enhance fungal feeding nematodes. When the fungal and bacterial feeding nematode population are high, this will increase the omnivorous and predatory nematodes. Besides increasing many beneficial nematodes in the soil, sun hemp also increase other soil organisms such as columbola and chytrid worms, mites, tardigrades, and etc. etc. All of these soil organisms play an important role in nutrient cycling. Therefore, sun hemp is keeping the soil very healthy. Now there is one problem in using sun hemp as green manure. When sun hemp is incorporated into soil, it breaks down very fast. In two weeks, most of the nitrogen will be mineralized, so it does not supply nitrogen for your crop over a long period of time. Researchers begin to use sun hem as a surface mulch. Not only the material will break down at a slower rate, a thick mulch can also help to suppress weeds. In conclusion, the best sun hem management practice is to partially till in some sun hem material into the soil to suppress plant parasitic nematodes and to enhance beneficial soil microorganisms. Secondly, you want to trim additional sun hem materials to lay on the soil surface as a mulch for additional nutrients inputs over a longer period of time while suppressing weeds. Further, in Chapter 3, you will see why you should also keep some sun hem up as an intercrop with your cash crop for insect management purpose.